God's grace and peace to you as we join in worship at Sun Prairie United Methodist Church on this Transfiguration Sunday. We welcome those gathered here in this sanctuary and those joining us online. My name is Pastor Claire Douglas, and I'm the Associate Pastor of Faith Formation here at Sun Prairie United Methodist Church. As a reconciling congregation, we extend a wide welcome to all God's people as we worship together, grow in our faith, care for others, and as we serve God in our communities. We hope that you will know God's life-giving love in this time of worship. Your attendance is important to us, you received a card when you came in for recording your attendance, and you may drop that in the offering plate when you leave worship. If you are joining us online today, you may use the comment section on YouTube to let us know you are with us, or you may go to the worship page of our church website at sunpurryumc.org to register your attendance. If you are a guest today, we extend a warm welcome. If you are a guest here in person, please stop by the Welcome Center if you have not already done so so that we can greet you and we can get to know each other more. For those guests joining us online, please see who we are and the ministries we share together on our church website. As we begin worship, we pour water into our baptismal font. As the water is poured out, we are reminded that the water refreshes our spirit and marks us all as children of God. In this time of worship, may we feel the love and grace of God that we receive at baptism and carry with us, to each, carry with us each day. May we remember our baptism and be thankful. And now our chancel choir will draw us into worship. Please join with me in the call to worship. Arise, for our light has come, and the glory of God is shining upon us. It is our gracious God whose voice we hear at a distance in the midst of the mysterious clouds. It is God who claims us each as beloved and who shines out of darkness and gathers us in. It is God who says, this is my son, whom I dearly love. Listen to him. Let us worship the one who shines into our darkness and brings enough light to guide us through each day. Our first scripture reading is from Psalm 50, 1 through 6. From the rising of the sun to where it sets, God, the Lord God, speaks, calling out to the earth, from Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines brightly. Our God is coming. God won't keep quiet. A devouring fire is before God. A storm rages all around God. God calls out to the skies above and to the earth in order to judge the people. Bring my faithful to me 
those who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The skies proclaim God's righteousness because God is the judge. A word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. My name is Miss Stephanie, and I am excited to teach you a story. Now, a few weeks ago, does that sound okay? Kind of poking me in the eye. A few weeks ago, we got cards, right? We got our, our special star words, and this was my star word. It was confession. And I remember I had it, and I'm thinking, confession? I'm kind of an open book, almost to a fault. I tell people my problems all the time. And I said to Pastor Jenny, I said, confession, what am I supposed to do with this? And she said, oh, this is going to drive me nuts. She said, oh, it'll come to you, Stephanie, it'll come to you. And I said, oh, okay. And so then on Wednesday, yeah, I know, it's just really just, <laughs> it's not going to stay in my head. Here, we'll do a little. Ta-da. Thank you. Okay. And then on Wednesday, I came to confirmation, because I'm a confirmation mentor. And I just wanted to touch base with Pastor Jenny to make sure my idea of what I was going to talk about would fit with what she was going to talk about. And before I told her what I was going to talk about, she goes, it's Transfiguration Sunday. That's what you're going to talk about. And I, again, have to confess that I said, well, then you need to tell me what Transfiguration Sunday is if I'm going to talk about that. And I was kind of embarrassed because I've been teaching Sunday school for many years. I've been coming to this church for many years. And I have to admit that I don't know, I didn't know what Transfiguration even was, what the story was. So over the weekend, Ever since then, I've been struggling trying to figure out what am I going to talk about. And so what I had to do is I had to go back to the Bible and look it up about where it talks about Transfiguration Sunday. And it's in the Bible three different times. And somehow I have missed this story 
many times maybe, I don't know, or maybe we've just not talked about it a lot. So I thought, well, maybe if I talk about it and we see it, it will stay in your brain. So when you guys are growing ups, you don't forget what Transfiguration Sunday is about. So I'm thinking we're going to put on a play. You ready? Will you help me put on a play? Or do you want to be an audience member? You can be an audience member too. It's okay. Um, Miss Chloe, where's Miss Chloe? She's going to help me. And I bet you Miss Megan would help too. All of my poor volunteers that really they know better. They know that Miss Stephanie just always volunteers them. Let's see. Okay, we're going to do a play. We're going to create the story of transfiguration. Now, you guys are going to be disciples, okay? So Jesus, this is Jesus. Chloe's going to be Jesus. A disciple is Jesus' friends, okay? They're the people that have been following Jesus. Now, Jesus has been really, really busy the last few weeks, months. I, to be quite honest, I'm not quite sure of the time frame. Years. Years. He's been very, very busy healing people, talking to people, doing miracles. And you disciples, his best friends, you have been with him and learning from him and supporting him and all the things, okay? So... We're going to pretend that this aisle is a big hill. In the Bible, it says it's a huge mountain, and they climb it. I'm thinking it might be a little bit of an exaggeration because, let's be real, you're going to just climb a mountain. I bet it was a big hill. So it's probably a big hill. So this is going to be our big hill. So are you guys game? Do you want to be an observer or do you want to be a disciple? You want to be a disciple? Okay, you guys go. Chloe, go in the back. Follow Jesus. I need you. Yes. Go ahead. Follow Jesus. You are his three disciples, Peter, John, and James. I learned that because I read it (laughs) multiple times. Now, Jesus and his disciples, they were really busy, and it was one night. They were so exhausted. They'd been working so hard, and Jesus says to his friends, come for a walk with me up this really big mountain to pray. And the Okay, so go ahead and say that, Chloe. But the disciples are like, no, dude, we're tired. We're tired. (laughs) And and Jesus says, no, seriously. We're going to go up this hill, and we're going to pray. It's really important to me. So they come up the hill. (sighs) All right, keep coming. Keep coming. All right. So you guys are going to sit down and pray, but you're really tired, so you kind of start falling asleep. Jesus is going to be praying, okay? And Jesus starts praying, and then all of a sudden, it was amazing. The the friends noticed that Jesus was glowing, just glowing, (laughs) and like shimmering, like the brightest light they had ever, ever seen. Jesus was just glowing. And then there was two men standing next to him. One was Moses, who was, he had died a while ago, but he was a very, very famous prophet and leader. Everybody loved. And the other man was Elijah, who was another famous leader. And the disciples, they recognized that. And Moses and Elijah were talking to Jesus about how it was starting to be time for him to go away and depart, okay? You guys are doing great, okay? And you guys were like, oh my word, this is crazy. And then there was a voice, and it was God. And God said, This is my son. Listen to him. But she, but she was really excited. She said, dudes, that's my son. You should listen to them. Listen to Jesus. That's my son. And it was the voice of God. Okay? And then a dark cloud came over, and they disappeared. And Jesus was back to looking like his normal self. And the disciples were like, whoa, that, that was crazy. 
And that's the end of the story. <laughs> But the, the, reason this is, the reason this story is important is because this is one of the few times where God says out loud, listen, that's my boy, that's my boy, listen to him. What he's saying is important because it's from me, okay? So that's what we have to remember. So when you're growing up like me and somebody asks you to tell the story of transfiguration, I hope that somewhere in your brain, you can remember what happened because you will remember Chloe up here, you know, wrapped up. Does that make sense? All right, good. Let's say a prayer. Thank you for your help, you guys. All right. Dear God, thank you for helping me get through this sermon <laughs> and teaching me so much about you and about trust, and knowing that you're always going to be there to help us learn and understand and figure things out. We just need to be patient and trust in you. Now we're going to say the Lord's Prayer, which is a prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, those same friends that always follow him. He taught them this very special prayer. And so now we say it thousands and thousands of years later, we still say it. So if you can't remember it, it's up there. Let's all say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. This is one of those days I could just say amen and move on. <laughs> But now we have come to our time of confession. We've come to be gathered in God's presence once again and humble ourselves in God's presence. And as we come to our time of confession, we are aware of the many times when we have failed to be the people that God has called us to be. So we come humbly into God's presence asking for forgiveness, knowing that God hears our prayers. So in that spirit, I invite us to join together in our prayer of confession that is printed in your bulletin and also on the screen. Let us pray together. God of all possibilities, we hunger for encounters with the sacred, and we hunger for mountaintop experiences where we will see and know you in new and marvelous ways. Yet we confess that at times we have come with little expectation of your transforming possibilities for our lives. Open our lives that we may seek your way for our living. May we shine with the power of your spirit and be renewed in true community. Gather up our broken lives into your transforming, healing presence and hear now our silent confessions. Hear the good news. God is merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. God's love never ends. And God's love is something that will never give up on us and something in, from which all creation cannot separate us. So holding to that truth, I proclaim to you that we are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Well, today brings an end to this season called After Epiphany, the season after Epiphany, and it begins the season of Lent next week. So this is the, the in-between transition Sunday between Epiphany and the season of Lent. And the Gospel reading on the Sunday before Lent is always this transfiguration story, the transfiguration of Jesus. And the transfiguration ushers in Ash Wednesday, which will be this coming Wednesday, and it's a doorway into Lent in this six weeks journey that we'll take toward the cross. And today we are also continuing talking about our 24, 2024 ministry theme here at the Sun Prairie United Methodist Church, which is called Beyond Our Doors. So this year in ministry, we're thinking beyond our doors, beyond the doors of our church building, and in partnership with others in our community. The transfiguration story, as Stephanie told the children, appears in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So we know it's an important story because it shows up three times in the Bible. And the Ma Matthew, Mark, and Luke are known as the synoptic gospels because they share similar stories. So I invite you to read all three stories sometime to just to see how the stories differ slightly, the slight differences and the similarities from gospel to gospel. But today we will hear the story from the gospel of Mark. And this story begins by saying, six days later. And that refers to it being six days after Jesus has told his disciples about his fate the fate that awaits him in Jerusalem. I'll be reading from the ninth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, verses 2 to 9, and I invite you to follow along either with the words on the screen or in the Pew Bibles. But listen now to a word of God. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and brought them to the top of a very high mountain where they were alone. He transformed in front of them, and his clothes were amazingly bright, brighter than if they had been bleached white. Elijah and Moses appeared and were talking with Jesus. Peter reacted to all this by saying to Jesus, Rabbi, it's good that we're here. Let's make three shrines, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He said this because he didn't know how to respond, for the three of them were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice spoke from the cloud. This is my son, whom I dearly love. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them not to tell anyone what they had seen until the human one had been risen from the dead. A word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, give us ears to hear and hearts and minds to discern your message for us today. Then help us to carry the blessings of your love out with us into a waiting and needy world, knowing that you do go with us as our rock, as our strength, and as our redeemer. Amen. Well, perhaps you're like me, and there are times when you're in worship, maybe in person or online, and something, something makes you think like Peter. And something makes you say, it's good for us to be here. It's good for us to be here. Maybe it's the music that speaks to you. Maybe the music just simply washes over you like it did today for me. Or maybe it's a scripture reading that hits you in just the right way. Or maybe it's something that's said that speaks to your heart or speaks to where you are in life right now. Or maybe it's the people that are around you in worship. It seems like in worship, it's easier to hear and see and believe the promises of God, the promises of God's love. And we say things like, it's good to be here. It's good for us to be here. And maybe, like Peter, you want to stay in that moment. You want to stay in worship. You want to just capture the moment because maybe you know what's ahead of you. What's ahead of you maybe in the rest of this day or in the days that are ahead of us in this week. And soon you know that you'll return. You'll leave worship and you'll return to the everyday. And sometimes the everyday can be tough. The everyday can be difficult. And we want to stay on top of the mountain. We want to stay in God's presence on the mountain. Perhaps that's what the disciples were thinking. 
when Peter said to them, well, let's build some shrines. Let's build three dwellings, and then we can just stay here. But God doesn't allow us to do that. God doesn't allow us to stay in the splendor for very long. Instead, we have to come down the mountain. But the thing is, God comes with us. God comes down the mountain with us back into the reality of our lives. If we were to continue reading in this story in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus comes down the mountain with his disciples, comes down the mountain, and together they go back into community. They go back into the community, and they begin blessing people, they begin healing people, and sharing God's love back in the community. I believe the ancient stories, like this story of the transfiguration, are told to tell us who God is. The ancient stories really are told to tell us who God is and to remind us that God still speaks and that we are still called to listen. The stories are told to remind us that God still uses God's own power to bring God's own presence into our lives, seeking relationship with us and seeking life with us. And to remind us that God is with us. God is with us when we serve, and God is with us when we work to bring about change in life around us. When we are in relationship with God, we are making ourselves available to God. We're making ourselves available to God's transfiguring presence that changes us and that shines, shines God's light in the life around us. There's a pastor in North Carolina who writes about the privilege of being able to preach at a summer chapel. It's a summer seasonal chapel in North Carolina. And this chapel is located in the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. And it only operates on Sundays from June through September. But each year, during just those four months, this church collects and distributes over $300,000 for the poor and the hungry and the homeless and the sick, and especially the at-risk and vulnerable children that live in those mountains. A resident of this church, which is called Blow Blowing Rock United Methodist Church, a resident of that Blowing Rock community, said that he knows what the mission of the church is. He knows the mission of the church, and then he said, even though they see themselves as a part-time church, a seasonal church, we see them as a full-time expression of God's love and light to our community. That's how a small seasonal church is seen by their community. How does the community of Sun Prairie see us? See us as the Sun Prairie United Methodist Church. How does our community see us or see us as individuals in the community? When we can be grounded in the story of the transfiguration, it helps us look beyond our doors. It helps us share ministry beyond our doors because it allows us to know the divine presence, the divine presence of God to meet human needs beyond the doors of our church building. Knowing the story of the transfiguration gives us a better chance to glimpse even a small amount of this dazzling bright light that Jesus becomes in the midst of human needs, in the midst of the human needs of which are all around us, in life all around us. When we know the story of the transfiguration, Jesus becomes like this beacon of light, almost like a lighthouse, that shines God's light and love out beyond us into our communities. One author has said that the trans, in the transfiguration story, Jesus insists upon being seen. That Jesus insists upon being seen. Do we insist upon being seen in our community as a Sun Prairie United Methodist Church? Do we insist upon being seen in this community? Because we know that we have a wide, welcoming presence that shares God's love in this world, 
and God shares God's love with our community. And we know that that wide, welcoming presence makes a difference to people in our community. What if we were to use the transforming, transfiguring light of God in Sun Prairie so that we could not be ignored? People would have to look at us. We would insist upon being seen. This past week, we received a letter of thanks as a church from the executive director of the Sunshine Place here in Sun Prairie. And that letter thanked our church for the long tradition we have of supporting the Sunshine Place and the Sun Prairie Food Pantry at a very high level. And part of the letter listed our support, the church's support in 2023. And as a church, we supported the food pantry, we supported Stuff the Bus, and we supported Rays of Hope Housing Assistance Program with $14,187. And that's money, that's real money, above and beyond the hundreds of pounds of food that we as a church give to the food pantry each month. And then other highlights in this letter included saying that in partnership with others in Sun Prairie, we were part of offering 1,273,688 pounds of food to the food pantry in 2023, 20,513 hot meals through Sunshine Supper, clothing 883 children through the cards closet, and 1,614 backpacks with school supplies for children in Sun Prairie. I'm so proud of how our faith community, so thankful for how our faith community comes together to share resources like that and to partner with the ministries that the Sunshine Place offers. Now, in this year, in 2024, as we focus on Beyond Our Doors, beyond the doors of our church building, what would happen if we started asking and acting upon the why questions in our Sun Prairie community? Things like, why are so many individuals and families now using our food pantry, which used to be known as the emergency food pantry, and now it's simply a food pantry that feeds people every day? Why are more than 400 meals being served every Monday night at the Sunshine Supper, up from about 150 meals before the pandemic? Why is that happening in Sun Prairie? Why do families in our Sun Prairie community struggle to provide clothing and beds and school supplies for their children? There are community groups and agencies within Sun Prairie that are asking these questions, and a lot more, that we can partner with beyond our doors to shine and share the light of Christ in ways that ask the hard questions and are part of the hard conversations. In a couple of weeks, our confirmation students will gather on Friday night and Saturday here at the church and out in our community for a retreat and part of that retreat is going to be a service project. And the service project that we are going to be doing is going to be going to share stuffing, we're going to stuff food bags for our North Side Elementary School, which is in our neighborhood just next door to the church. And we're going to pack food bags for families from the North Side Elementary School for the weekends, families that would be food insecure on the weekends without these bags. And the bags of food will go home with them on Fridays. And our class will go to the grocery store, and we'll buy the food, and then we'll come back to church and we'll pack the food. But part of our confirmation lesson will be deciding what kinds of food can we purchase for hungry families with only a limited amount of resources, a limited amount of money. And then we'll talk about the why questions. Why our youth think that families in our neighborhood are food insecure on the weekends. And then I'm hoping that we can shine some light on the reasons, on the reasons why. The light of Christ speaks to the promise that God is here, that God is with us, and that God seeks to shine light in life around us because God is life. 
The transfiguration story helps us understand that there is potential for God's amazingly bright light to shine into the ordinary, everyday places and people through us, through us. The promise of the transfiguration is that God's light, the God's presence through us always has been and always will be something that God works through to transform the world and to transform us. So how will we offer the transfiguring Jesus to our neighbors? How will we be part of transfiguring moments beyond our doors, beyond the doors of our church? When Moses and Elijah appear with Jesus in the story on the mountain, they really represent the past. But they also represent a connection. They represent a connection to one another and the power that we can know in community with one another. Wednesday of this week will be Ash Wednesday in the start of our Lenten season. And we will gather once again. We'll gather to share the sacrament of communion. And we'll gather to allow our foreheads to be marked in the sign of the cross with ashes. And those ashes and that communion will be signs that we are entering the season of Lent. So may that be a time, may that be yet another time when we can say it is good to be here. It is good for us to be here. Good for us to be in worship with one another and good for us to be in this community of Sun Prairie. This is the good news of God this day. Thanks be to God. Amen. that we do shine God's light within our lives and the lives of others is through our prayers. We always remind you that you can make a prayer request by going to our church website and there's a prayer request button there or you can call the church office and we'll make sure we lift your prayers in worship and send them out over our prayer chain. I do have several prayers to lift to you today. Phil Wilms, a longtime member of our church who moved to Texas a couple of years ago to be closer to family, he passed away this last week. So our prayers with Phil's family. I talked to his daughter this week, and she was reminiscing about how they joined the church in 1968 after the, the merger that made us the United Methodist Church and how much her father enjoyed this church and this faith community. So there will be a memorial service for Phil uh, probably in the spring. So we'll let you know about that. 
Pat, Wendy had another cancer surgery this last week, and that went well for her, and so we are praying for her good healing. Dave Candelmo will be having some surgery this week, and so we're hopeful that that surgery can be successful for him, and so our prayers for, for good healing for Dave. Carol Esser's brother passed away this last week rather unexpectedly from a heart attack. So Carol, our prayers are with you and your family during this time. He lived in Ohio. Bonnie Elmquist asked for our prayers for her sister, who's going through a tough time with her health. So prayers for Bonnie Elmquist's sister. And then we have some beautiful flowers on our communion table today, and those were given by our Sweet Assurance Women's Chorus that sang the first service, and they gave those in honor of their director, Linda Barrett, whose birthday is tomorrow. So those have been beautifying our sanctuary. Well, now I invite us to come into God's presence once again and be able to connect with God in our own way through silent prayer, and then I'll also offer us words of prayer. So let us be in a time of prayer. Loving God, we come to you as those who seek to base our lives on the love and faith and hope of Jesus the Christ. We pray that from day to day, we may be patient and faithful and forgiving in our care of one another in this world of many people. We offer our prayers this day, God, for those who feel overwhelmed by their responsibilities, for those who feel abandoned by those they love, for those whose safety is threatened by war or violence, for those whose well-being is compromised by hunger, illness, homelessness, or a lack of adequate health care. And we pray for those who grieve. Give us, we pray, a love that cares more than it calculates, a faith that trusts that love is still stronger than hate, and a hope that will not relinquish its vision of a world full of compassion and well-being for all people. May we be your light that shines in amazing and bright ways for people in our lives and in our communities. Give us, gracious God, a passion for justice and a love that can expand our thinking to be wide and welcoming. We pray remembering Jesus, whose authority was love, and whose guide was your very presence. Amen. As we come to our time of offering, we are reminded that our gifts make a difference within our church walls and out in our community and the world. In gratitude, we will have our offering plates at the door as you exit worship this morning, or you can scan or use the QR code in the pew pocket in front of you to give online. If you are worshiping online today, you can also visit the website to give electronically or mail or drop off your offering in the church office. Each week we share pictures that help tell the stories of what our offerings go to, and today we have pictures from Camp Sunday a few weeks ago. There's still lots of time to register for camp this summer at our United Methodist camps. As a reminder, we are supporting every camper this year with a third of their registration cost covered through scholarships. We are still looking for financial support for campers, so if you would like to grab a marshmallow out in the narthex, you can do so. Thank you for the many ways that your gifts support our camping ministries. And now in gratitude, let us stand and sing the doxology.
may be seated. Before we end our time of worship, I have a number of different things I want to share with you about what is happening in the life of our church and ways that you can get involved and connected this week. If you are not already receiving our Monday devotional word of the week or our weekly Thursday email that outlines what's happening in the life of this faith community, please reach out to the church office so we can get you on the email list. Lent begins this Wednesday, February 14th with Ash Wednesday. uh, On Wednesday, our church staff will be at the Wisconsin Annual Conference parking lot on the corner of Bird and Windsor Street for drive through ashes and coffee from 7.30 to 8.30 a.m. And that night, we will worship both in person and online at 7 p.m. We are assessing interest in small marriage group meeting for seven sessions this spring, exploring the five love languages. This is open to people who are newly married or who have been married for decades. If you would be interested in potentially being a part of this group, please reach out to the church office or to talk to Deb Melhorn. Our Lent study this year will be Meeting Jesus at the Table. There will be several different groups and meeting times. Please watch the church website and emails for more information on being a part of one of our study groups. Today, our youth are hosting Super Bowl of Caring. You are invited to drop a donation in one of the soup pots that the youth will be holding at the end of the worship service. All donations from today will go to the Sun Prairie Food Pantry. This is one of those ways that we support the Sun Prairie Food Pantry every year. And lastly, join us for worship next Sunday, either here in our church sanctuary or online at 8.30 or 10.45 a.m. Next Sunday, we will begin our Lenten journey together. Our theme for Lent this year is Come to the Table. I invite you to stand as we receive the closing blessing. Now, as we leave worship, May we hold to the truth that it is good for us to be here. Now the call upon our lives is to go and to share the amazingly bright love of God, the hope-filled promise of Christ's grace, and the sustaining strength of the Holy Spirit's presence. Go as God's thankful people. Amen.